Hey, what's going on everybody out there? My name is Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. So today we're talking about a forgotten hero from the console wars of the 90s. As a survivor of the console wars and a Sega Genesis kid from back in the day, it's pretty surreal to me that we never actually saw a reimagining or a big sequel of this character and this game on any other like Sega platform. It just kind of like faded into obscurity. Don't get me wrong, there was an attempt to do so on the PlayStation 2 back in the day, but since that never actually came out, it totally doesn't count. But yet, this game has been included on every single Genesis collection on almost every single platform, but yet we never got an actual game afterwards. But let's actually take a look and see if his first outing on the Sega Genesis was actually really good as we remember. Was it one of the best Genesis games on the platform? Let's find out together. This is Vector Man for the Sega Genesis. Cue that kick-ass music! Vector Man is a 1995 action game for the Sega Genesis that was developed by Blue Sky Software. It's funny because as old and forgotten as Vector Man is, this game has been included in so many Genesis collections, including a few released on modern consoles like the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and mobile devices. Vector Man is about a robot who manages waste on Earth in 2043, a time when humans have left the planet to colonize other planets. This is mainly due to the pollution of the Earth getting so bad that humans needed to look elsewhere for resources to survive. But in doing so, the humans left mechanical orbots to clean up what's left on Earth, including one orbot named Raster. Unfortunately, something goes wrong and Raster changes into an evil dictator called Warhead. Upon returning to Earth from a trip to the Sun, Vector Man realizes what has happened and vows to stop Warhead before he could damage the planet further and destroy or any humans that return to Earth. It's a crazy story that seems like standard fare for video game plots in the 90s, but one that gives you enough setup to hopefully create a new mascot for the Sega Genesis. And while Vector Man wasn't as popular as Sega's spiky blue hedgehog back then, he definitely garnered a cult following and even got enough support to get a sequel on the Genesis. But we'll get to that game another time. For now, is the original Vector Man any good and has it aged very well since back then? There are some good parts to it, but there's also a lot of things that haven't really aged all too gracefully. Now immediately I have to say that the visual style of Vector Man is very unique for a Sega Genesis game. There were other Genesis games that did try like this pseudo 3D style, but Vector Man is the first game that I could really remember that really committed to it throughout the entirety of the game. Everything from Vector Man himself to all the different enemies that you run into, and even the backgrounds to an extent, really kind of play up that pseudo 3D style. Kind of like trying to replicate 3D models and stuff, but within a 2D environment and a 2D rendering. Granted, the stuff in the very far background still looks like it's 2D or at least hand painted or it's like drawn and stuff, but all the models that are in the foreground and all the different platforms you could jump onto and even some of the different special effects look like they were done in a 3D engine. The other thing like I mentioned before is that the music is really kick ass. It has that unique tone that you would only really associate with the Sega Genesis. You just don't get these types of sounds on like something like the Super Nintendo or even the PlayStation for that matter. The music is very techno. It kind of fits in with the whole robot theme and stuff that it has going on. It just sounds sounds very good. And again, when you put it next to all these different visuals, if you're like going through the level and stuff, it just sounds very good. Granted, a lot of the game's sound effects do kind of get in the way from time to time. And I'm not gonna lie, there are a few tracks in there that aren't all that great, but the majority of the soundtrack is pretty freaking good. Again, I think it's just something that you really associate just with the Sega Genesis. It was just so out there and unique for its time. But outside all the visuals and the presentation of Vector Man, let's talk about its gameplay, which for the time was very similar to a lot of other games coming out, even though it did put a twist on things. Vector Man plays like a run and gun action game. There's some platforming as you'd expect for a game like this that was made in the mid 90s, but unlike Sonic and Mario back then, Vector Man is more about shooting things most of the time. The platforming isn't really a big focus or even done that well in comparison anyway, but when it comes to blowing things up, Vector Man is very skilled in doing so. You run into a variety of enemy robots that immediately get repeated a whole lot throughout the game. You'll eventually see different kinds of bots lurking around, but not after seeing many of the same robot you destroyed beforehand. To fight these things, Vector Man has an arsenal of photon shots that he can shoot from his hand that allows him to blast away these robots. Think of something like how Iron Man fights in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. But besides a basic shot, Vector Man can pick up ammo for a machine gun, wave shot, and a bolo gun to give him some more firepower. This makes up the majority of the game, shooting at enemies and destroying bosses as you make your way through 
through to the final battle with Warhead at the end. It's a very repetitive game and might get a little tiresome at some point, but a lot of the charm doesn't come from the gameplay as much as it does from the presentation of the game around it. There are a lot of similarities in the gameplay of Vector Man to other games that were released at the time. However, Vector Man puts a lot more focus on the run and gun aspect of things, more so than the platforming, which was really popular for both games on the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. A good analogy I could give you guys is that while Sonic the Hedgehog was the colorful platformer and the mascot of the Sega Genesis, it really was the quarterback of the console, Vector Man was more like the defenseman that was ready to smack up people and be really grimy and gritty. It fit alongside the attitude that the Sega Genesis marketing was trying to convey to people. And don't get me wrong, this type of gameplay is pretty fun. It's very kind of like reminiscent of stuff like Contra and a whole bunch of other run and gun type of games, especially for that era where the platformer, especially the 16-bit platformer, was so very popular. Unfortunately, one of the things that Vector Man really suffers from is a lot of different difficulty spikes. The difficulty of the entire game is very inconsistent. It could kind of be all over the place, depending on what stage you're in. There will be certain areas where you're fighting a variety of different enemies or like, you know, trying to match up to some sort of boss, and it'll be very, very easy. However, then all of a sudden you'll hit this brick wall where things seem like it's a little bit more difficult, but more difficult in the sense that it's very unfair and kind of like feels a little bit buggy here and there. Throughout my time playing it, I really experienced a lot of different moments like that in levels where I thought it was going to be very easy and just wasn't really all that big of a deal. All of a sudden, I end up losing a whole bunch of lives to things where I feel like wasn't really a problem earlier in the game. It just felt like things were kind of just being thrown at me or changed up on the fly. Now, admittedly, I do have to be totally transparent with you guys. I did have to cheat in order to get some footage of the later stages of the game because one of the biggest problems that I have with Vector Man is that the game doesn't allow you to continue. Once you get a game over, you're knocked all the way back to the beginning of the game, which really sucks that you're not able to continue from where you left off, or at least give me a certain amount of continues in order to kind of, you know, try to see if I could complete the game. But unfortunately, the game just makes you have to go through the entire game in one go. Now, the flip side of this, which is a little bit funny if you actually do this, when you cheat and use the level select code, you can't get the good ending of the game, which I find very funny. You get this little message from the developers telling you, hey, that was great that you beat the game, now go do it without cheating. That is kind of funny and a little bit humorous, but again, with a game that doesn't allow you to continue, I find like this is kind of like a jab to the face. But again, that's just me. It might be a little bit nitpicky for some people. I just feel like you should be allowed to continue at least a certain amount of times without having to redo everything in the entire game. Now, there's one aspect about Vector Man I haven't really touched on yet, and it's actually a huge part of his character and a huge part of his games. His transformations that he could do throughout all the different levels you play through is actually pretty cool, but there's something I do want to talk about with it. Vector Man could transform into various modes from time to time in different levels. Unfortunately, this isn't something you could do at will. You have to destroy these random TVs you find in each stage and grab a power-up that lets you change form. The silly part about this isn't the transformations themselves, they're actually pretty cool, but the timing and overall usefulness of them in each stage will vary greatly. Sometimes you could become a rolling bomb that could destroy breakable walls, change into a buggy that rams into things, or even become a drill that could bust open the floor to open up new areas. But it sucks when you discover these transformations and end up wasting them when you have no idea where they'll be most useful, especially if you don't know the entire layout of a stage. Other transformations look a bit more lame in comparison, with a few letting you quickly fly over most of the level or doing other situational things. The way Vector Man looks for these transformations isn't that creative or great looking, like when he morphs into a fish and could swim fast through the water. Their design is a bit lazy in my opinion, while others seem a little bit more effort was put into them. I wish you were able to store these transformations somehow and use them when you come across something in a level that might be worth investigating. Most of the time, I end up wasting my transformations transformations, especially towards the later portions of the game. It's a cool and unique concept for Vector Man, but there are ways that it could have been improved upon and implemented a little bit better. Now let me be very clear about something. The transformations for Vector Man are pretty cool, in concept. Mostly because this is the first game that Vector Man is featured in, not all the transformations really could be all that great, or at least, you know, as good as they possibly could be, in my personal opinion. You do have those unique stages where Vector Man transforms into some sort of object. It could be like a train or something, or something random like that, and the entire stage is just of that. But those stages can either be very short or even very cheap in certain instances, where you're losing a lot of lives. Just the overall design of them, however, isn't all that great. I was hoping towards the later portions of the game where the transformations would get a little bit more elaborate rather than just Vector Man looking like he kind of just scrunches up or just gets into some sort of weird pose and he's supposed to be a specific type of object. It felt a little bit like a cop-out, however I can't really be too mad at the game, especially since this is the first game in his series. Granted, some of the ideas for this game were maybe a little bit too ambitious for the time. In later games, or I should say the sequel, they did kind of mix things up a little bit, but we'll talk about that game another time. Sticking with the transformations of this game, I just felt like there wasn't a lot of really great looking ones, even though some of them 
them were pretty useful. Like for example, when he turns into a bomb and you're able to explode certain sections, that is pretty cool. But like I mentioned before, you feel like you could waste these transformations without even really realizing it. It would have been cool to store these transformations in some sort of way in like a menu or something and then transform into them later on, especially if you pick them up and you feel like you can't really use that transformation at that moment. That might be wishful thinking again for this style of game, but that's just my own personal opinion. I felt like the transformations would have been a little bit more special if something like that was done. For the stages where you are transformed into a specific object, I feel like some of those stages where it is featuring the final boss warhead, those could have been a little bit better, those could have been a little bit much more dynamic, or at least not as difficult in certain sections. Again, some of those things you could lose a lot of lives like super quickly and just get a game over and be like, oh crap, I gotta start the entire game all over again. That's probably another nitpicky thing from me, but that's just my own personal opinion. So overall, has Vector Man really aged all that well since it first came out on the Sega Genesis? To be totally honest with you guys, I don't really think so as much, even though I loved this game and appreciated it when I was growing up. I feel like there are certain things that could have been done a little bit better that just very much impact the experience, especially the inability to continue when you get a game over. I also feel like some other aspects like the transformations and a few level design things could have been a little bit better. Granted, this is still just the first game for Vector Man, but again, even so, I feel like there was a lot of other games that were released at the time that were doing certain things a little bit better than him. Regardless though, I do appreciate the attitude, I do appreciate the music, and I do appreciate the run and gun gameplay, which made it stand out as something unique and different compared to everything else that was released at the time. If you haven't yet played the original Vector Man, you could get it in a variety of different places. A lot of different Genesis collections has this game in it. It's something that I feel like maybe you should experience at least one time and kind of see if it's actually your thing. It's got attitude, it's got a unique style, it's got run and gun gameplay, and it has a very big nostalgia factor that will speak to a lot of Genesis kids that grew up within that era. If you haven't yet really sat down and played through it, you definitely should when you have the time. Anyway, there you go. Those are my thoughts on the original Vector Man for the Sega Genesis. As someone that grew up playing that game when it first came out, this really speaks to me. There's a lot of nostalgia that goes into this. Even though I'm kind of a little bit more critical of the game now that I'm much older, I still do appreciate what this game has to offer. But those are just my opinions about the original Vector Man. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Tell me, did you guys grow up with the original Vector Man on Sega Genesis? Were you a Genesis kid? Or were you a Super Nintendo kid and actually saw this game from a distance? Put it in the comments section down below. And of course, don't forget to leave a like on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos just like this one. I have a ton of great content that I know you guys are going to love. And also, don't forget, I am on Patreon. At the dollar level tier or higher, you guys get a ton of exclusive content from me over on my Patreon page. There's links in the description box below. I have a ton of exclusive podcasts, other exclusive content, early access to new videos just like this one, and vlogs that I put up there on my Patreon page. You guys should definitely check it out. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. Make sure you guys check out some of these other videos in the boxes after the credits. And don't forget to visit my Patreon page via the annotations for more exclusive content. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.